Hello everyone. Hope all of you are doing well. Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to today's OSS North America Summit session on APSA the New Edge. A bit about myself. My name is Srilakshmi Sarva. I've been hanging around in the networking industry for almost the last two decades. Uh, most recently working on SGN and cloud technologies. My current uh, role, I head products at NetFoundry, a very uh, innovative startup, redefining the network paradigm and enabling new programmable constructs for the hyper-connected world of applications with its open source initiative called Project ZT, which we will hear through this session today. Prior to NetFoundry, I was at a company called Juniper Networks, driving the SDN and cloud solutions uh, with a product called Contra, which was also an open source uh, initiative at Juniper. And that's my Twitter handle. Now, in today's uh, session, when I say applications are the new edge, what do I mean by, by that? You know, we will review some of the trends that are fueling the edge and cloud uh, trends, uh, cloud innovation trends. What is Project ZD and why should you care about it? We'll talk a little bit about the apps that fit into the uh, need or domain of secure by design applications. And we'll, we'll, we will do a code walkthrough or a demo based on, uh, uh, based on the time that we have for the session and we'll end it with Q&A. Now, when I say the edge, you know, uh, edge has uh, different connotations. It's mostly a misnomer. And we, you know, I will create a baseline reference on what I mean by the edge in, in the next uh, slide or two. Application architectures have evolved from a centralized mainframe based model to a distributed client server model in the last several decades. And most recently into virtualized and containerized form factors with cloud adoption being on the rise. With the advent of microservices based application architectures, containerization, service meshes, enterprises are embracing open architectures, white box based technologies, open source software with 5G and private LTE becoming a reality in terms of scaling the notion of connected things to thousands or uh, tens of thousands of devices. There's yet again, a, a, an evolutionary trend of enterprises embracing digital transformation to re-architect, modernize their applications, build new industry 4.0 applications that fuel their businesses, processes, and things to a magnificent scale that we have never seen before. And it's all centered around cloud and edge computing. Now the AI and ML based technologies with, it, with their data learning models and analytics are further fueling and putting edge at the forefront. Edge I said is a misnomer, the wide variety of definitions, edge in the context of this presentation is anything that can skip us, that can span between the end device, the application or the sensor that's generating data and the cloud, whether it's private uh, or public. Modern digital applications, whether it's smart factory floor automation with AR, VR type capabilities, a smart retail uh, enhanced consumer experience with drone-based deliveries or contactless deliveries, mainly due to COVID-19, or a smart retail uh, healthcare uh, uh, experience with telemedicine type applications, connected vehicles with V2X technologies, and uh, smart cities for connected infrastructure. Take any of these applications, they are usually front-ended by a mobile app, providing an interface into uh, the environment. Now the AI and machine learning data analytics that are responsible for uh, uh, analyzing the data from uh, the sources uh, that, are, that are being generated by the devices or the applications or the sensors 
require extensive compute capacity. In an effort to reduce costs of sending the generated data over to cloud environments and to help increase the intelligence in real time, near real time, uh, the inference portion of the AI processing workflow is emerging to co-locate closer to the device or the application that's generating this data and enable real-time data pretreatment, filtering, and interpretation in the form of an edge platform. Note that the training models themselves are still residing in the cloud. The inferred data at the edge is sent back to the cloud. Now, there are several vendors providing these edge platforms today. Uh, Supermicro, Smart Retailer Edge, Azure Stack Edge, uh, Volterra, and other vendors are offering these edge platform capabilities. Gartner also predicts that 50% of the enterprise data will be outside of their data centers or cloud environments by 2022. Now, how do you securely connect these applications, the data sources, the mobile devices, the users, edge to cloud on demand using an internet as the uh, connectivity medium? The traditional networking and security approaches are too heavyweight and expensive to solve these application connectivity needs. Now, that's where NetFoundry comes into play with its cloud native networking approach to solve this distributed dynamic programmable connectivity needs across any application, any cloud or edge. To draw an analogy, similar to how one would log into a cloud provider's console to instantiate VMs or containers on demand and tear them down once they are done, in case of NetFoundry, an IT cloud or an OT administrator can spin up global scale networks on demand, programmatically enable access to the distributed endpoints, the applications, the devices across the globe. All that the IT administrator has to do is to log into the NetFoundry uh, NAS console, spin up a global scale private network, which would be ready in a matter of minutes and enroll the identity of the endpoints and the applications or the IoT devices or sensors that need to be part of the, uh, the overlay. Now, based on the identity, trust, context, such as geolocation, NetFoundry would use an authenticate before connect model to orchestrate a zero trust secure overlay an app specific connectivity which is called as an app man the one that you see as color coded in this uh, in this slide across these endpoints and in public private clouds over secure global fabric now global fabric itself spans across you know hyperscaler environments and private data centers that we own and all we need is internet connectivity and some cool application developers. How are we enabling this? And you know what's unique about this hybrid model is that we support legacy applications that have been uh, returned in, uh, uh, in the previous years in legacy environments, as well as modern applications that can benefit with the zero trust approach. We have uh, the endpoint clients, cloud gateways across market, several cloud service provider marketplaces. In addition, what's unique about NetFoundry is that we are enabling app developers to natively embed secure private networking with all before connect identity trust natively into the application itself. We no longer want networking to be a barrier to innovate nor security to be an afterthought. How do we go about this? How are we enabling this? Let's dig a little bit deeper. Project ZT is all about, we never trust anything. We verify everything before we establish that trust. To give a high level block diagram, uh, the NetFoundry platform has the uh, 
microservices based SaaS implementation that manages the orchestration of the network and enrollment of uh, uh, the edge devices or IoT cloud mobile applications that are connecting and dialing into the fabric. Now under the hoods below the SaaS layer is what we call as our open source platform project CD. We yes, that's true that we built our network as a service platform on top of the open source uh, building block that we believe in. And that has the fabric and the edge complementary to make this a programmable zero trust network experience possible. Now for the rest of this session, we will focus on the ZD fabric initiative. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit deeper around what fabric does and edge does and what are the application developers uh, 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 should care about. Now, what is ZT? ZT, in addition to it being a yummy pasta, it also means that it's a modern programmable network overlay with associated edge componentary for an application embedded zero trust networking approach. It is written by developers for developers. ZT allows app developers to take secure programmable constructs, identity and trust, and embed natively, to, uh, natively into the application a few lines of code, five to 10 lines of code, and it's available in multiple programming languages. The libraries and SDKs are available in multiple programming languages. Now, the best mental model to picture ZT is as two uh, separate modules, the fabric and the edge. If you look at our source code, you would see that these two repositories, uh, the ZD Edge and the Fabric repositories on our GitHub repo. The Fabric, uh, let's talk about it a little bit further. Uh, fabric consists of the network controllers, the edge routers that are responsible for creating the long haul routing mesh, pluggable transport such as quick transfer, TCP to UDP proxy optimizations, concept of services, routers, circuits, tons of functionality that can be extended, the visibility and routing metrics across the data paths, whole bunch of Xlink X management software that's really important, and an amazing piece of software on its own for delivering open source long haul overlay by itself. Now the edge sits on top of fabric. The fabric is the cake, edge is sort of the icing on the cake, where it offers the ease of use. Uh, so, you know, the end applications uh, or the endpoints can use the tunnelers, the SDKs available in multiple programming languages, providing that last mile connectivity so that the device or the app can talk to each other over the fabric-based overlay. Now, any client that's running the Edge SDK can host any service or it can be a client to any service. And all of that comes down to the policy configuration. The policy engine by itself is extremely powerful, extensible, can be set up to do automatic roles such that when devices appear, they can automatically be enabled uh, for auto enrollment and have access to other services and endpoints within the app fence. The policy configurations also allow you to configure things such as geofencing capabilities where you can restrict the edge routers and the controllers that need to be used in the fabric. A lot of complex systems fail to do this at scale, mainly because of the difficulty to manage thousands of devices and their policies. And here with Project ZT, you can set them up pretty much automatically apply the device, apply the policies on the devices when they show up, enable connectivity, revoke isolate access based on any external events triggers by simply modifying the policies, same policies. ZT Edge itself, as mentioned, is available in multiple programming languages, C, C Sharp, Java, Kotlin, 
Cordova electron go. We are adding many more uh, in the coming weeks. Our customers are in fact helping us extend these SDKs on the basis on the applications that they are building and they are innovating with us. In addition to the SDKs, which is mainly meant for greenfield applications, we also have pre-built application connectors or tunnelers for brownfield applications that are pre-existing in your environment that would want to benefit from the zero trust secure connectivity models. In addition, we also have a sidecar proxy implementation for Kubernetes environments, as well as a, a plain old Docker container available in our registries. Now, app embedded SDK or the app connector uh, pretty much intercepts the interested traffic based on the service name or the policy. There's no mention of IP addresses anywhere. And it sends it over the ZD fabric. Now the edge and the fabric are the two building blocks. While fabric can exist completely on its own, providing the long haul transport, independent of the edge, all of its functionality, all of its concerns are of its own. Can, it can pretty much uh, exist as its own entity for all practical purposes, delivering the fabric capability. How are the edge uses fabric and the way it does is that it carved out a small space for itself <clears throat> called the fabric api layer and it's an internal code level api that the edge uses to uh, uh, edge uses to uh, connect with um, uh, the fabric components Now that's how the edge and fabric work together in order to deliver the zero trust programmable connectivity models. The fabric has the network controller, the edge routers, and the edge componentry comes with the application SDKs or the app connectors or the tunnelers that plug into the fabric. And these applications and endpoints that are connecting and dialing into the fabric, imagine them at scale with thousands of routers and tens of thousands of these endpoints, applications, devices, riding over a programmable fabric. Theoretically, anybody could come along and start reproducing the edge capability and rewrite the edge using the fabric APIs. However, the value is that we have already done this for them. And on top, we have done it securely. And on top of that, you, we have a full lifecycle management uh, of certificates, not just for the initial board of trust, but also for continuous trust with periodic cert rotation and um, maintaining of the certain infrastructure is all handled by ZD. In addition, we provide end-to-end -end encryption across the endpoints and the applications that are riding on top of ZD fabric. Since we are a zero trust product and we don't trust, uh, you know, the, this particular project is all about zero trust and we don't trust anything unless we verify there's an interesting problem of how do we initiate and build trust. This means that we would need to put cryptographic software all over the place, configure them properly, manage them properly, including the life cycle. We are going to manage these entire uh, life cycle of private and public cert keys for the devices in large scale deployments, we're talking about thousands or millions of endpoints and devices and thousands of routers spread across the globe, across different cloud, hybrid cloud, public, private cloud environments, we would establish trust in these locations. So looking back at this picture, we have the SDK, we have the edge, the routers, the controllers, fabric, working in harmony, providing amazing capabilities on device identity, enrollment of trust, initiating the trust, 
fabric for long haul communication and end to end encryption, all packaged as a simple solution. When you compare this to a HTTPS type of uh, a session where you're initiating a connection to a website, where the server side connection is being validated, the server, the website is not validating the client who's originating the connection request. Single side, single side or server side validation mechanism. Whereas with CT, we're talking about with the edge and the fabric components, what we offer is a mutual TLS based cert validation and verification with, where communication in all directions, in both directions is validated, authorized and cryptographically signed using uh, public plus private key infrastructure managed by us. Now let's talk about, uh, before I talk about uh, bootstrapping trust, I wanted to mention that um, the ZT controller itself has its own CA and it is responsible for bootstrapping trust and extending that trust to the routers, the edge routers and the application edge uh, instances with, which are built with the SDKs. Now let's talk about how do we bootstrap trust from the controller to the edge routers and to the applications and, or, or, and to the applications that are built with the SDKs. An administrator who sets up the controller, uh, sets up the controller, the controller comes with a default uh, CA and a server sub. Admin requests for creating identity for the enrolling app or device. And it would do the same thing for enrolling a, a ZD uh, router. Uh, in this case, the admin then sends the generated JOT token back to the enrolling device that has the SDK component tree in it. The SDK component tree or the app or the tunnel or parses the JOT token, it retrieves the controller cert, verifies the JOT signature to ensure it's a valid one, and retrieves uh, the CS store from the controller, well-known CS store from the controller. At that point, the controller establishes trust with the SDK. However, the, uh, the how, in the, uh, sorry, the SDK establishes control, uh, trust with the controller. However, the controller has to establish trust with the SDK as a, a known identity. So that's when the app SDK sends and generates a CSR and enrollment request back to the controller and the controller validates the request and returns uh, the signed certificates back to the application endpoint. Now imagine all of this being done at scale across millions of uh, uh, distributed applications and devices and across thousands of uh, uh, ZDH routers. The SDK app, uh, the, the ZDH routers, uh, the ongoing trust, it's not just about building that initial trust. Ongoing trust is something that needs to be maintained by periodic rotation and the required infrastructure is managed by ZD. So, uh, the identity, trust, end-to-end -end encryption, data flows across the fabric, the smart routing, self-healing capabilities across the fabric, all of that form the basis of a programmable network fabric allowing distributed applications to use the mutual TLS, identity, trust, and encryption constructs. Now, there are additional details on our GitHub page where an important aspect about, uh, about uh, ZT, uh, the name it got, because of the fact that uh, there is no network connectivity established, no connectivity established unless the authentication is done across the initiating uh, service um, on both sides. And the assets, whether it's the edge routers or it's the applications themselves remain dark to the internet, which means that we avoid potential attacks 
and security hacks uh, that have been on the rise in the recent years with VPN-like technologies. Identification and authentication is sort of integrated and baked into the platform offering where you get a managed PKI infrastructure uh, with ZD. Now let's talk a little bit about what kind of applications can leverage ZD. Think of smart trading applications where there are remote traders using applications, trying to conduct transactions, low latency, uh, high performance transactions that are connected to cloud and edge data centers. Uh, typically, they are uh, using VPN-like technologies which are being replaced with uh, a ZD-based programmable overlay-based connectivity from the app into the uh, cloud and um, edge data center locations. Smart vehicles, silicon to cloud connectivity, where fleet of forklifts are staged with telemetry gateway units built on Dell Edge gateway boxes, deployed with Micron Authenta based hardware root of trust. Three applications, telemetry app over the top, uh, uh, update app and a diagnostic app all built with SDKs, with the ZD SDKs. They orchestrate connectivity from the edge appliance to the cloud data center locations for sending periodic updates on how the forklift is performing for predictive maintenance and in over the top updates. In case of a malfunctioning, the forklift administrator can log in via the management app man, isolate the failure, and uh, correct the issue. In this scenario, each application is getting its own private network, and there is no lateral movement in case a potential attack uh, occurs. The next use case is an interesting one with B2X. Uh, uh, capabilities such as uh, vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to vehicle, where the uh, third party trust needs to be established. In car applications requiring OTA updates on vehicle maintenance or um, charging, if in case of electric vehicles, uh, charging uh, stations, integrating with the uh, vehicle apps. Smart retail with enhanced customer services, contactless delivery, drone-based delivery, in-store maintenance of the inventory, uh, camera-based surveillance, connected warehouse management. All of these applications require zero trust connectivity to the application users and to cloud services that they need access to. Last but, last but not the least, which we will see a demo is the mobile point of sale applications that are being architected for secure MTLS based transactions between the mobile app and the cloud backend. These are few examples, but we are inviting app developers to start exploring this new paradigm of secure by design application innovation. Where do you want to ideally use ZD? You look for application architectures that require private business APN or VPN. You eliminate that with a, a zero trust uh, ZD based overlay. Look for opportunities to embed uh, secure by design, very low footprint connectivity constructs natively into the app. Applications that require heightened security uh, replace TLS with an MTLS implementation that's managed by ZD all of that without the enterprise needing to maintain, deploy PKI infrastructure. It's done by us on behalf of the customer and no hardware deployment is needed. Well, no meet is complete without a demo. And I intended to show two specific demo showcases, one with an application that is built with an SDK, with the ZD SDK written in Java, and the second one is a Windows application that leverages a pre-built uh, tunneler that's also built on top of our CSDK. Let me 
go back for a second. So the first demo that we are seeing is a mobile point of sale application where there is a mobile app, the Flash app, that is enrolled in terms of uh, identity and you know that's written in Java. Uh, the identity of that particular application is enrolled into a, a ZD-based system uh, and the code for the MPOS app is as simple as replacing a, a TCP connect with a ZD in it uh, using the Java SDK libraries that we publish. And as the app executes, you will see that the merchant initiates a, a sale transaction. The merchant of uh, this particular application is initiating a sale tra transaction on behalf of a customer. The customer uh, then receives, uh, at that point, the transaction is initiated and the customer needs to enter their mobile phone number and confirm the purchase amount. And once the purchase amount uh, is submitted, the transaction is initiated over a net foundry ZD based overlay. At this point, the customer will receive an OTP code, an OTP code, where in the backend dashboard, you could see that a transaction was initiated by a certain uh, merchant for a specific phone number, the OTP code was issued. And once the uh, end customer receives the OTP code, the OTP code 2988 in this case is entered in the mobile app. Then upon submission, the transaction is then uh, confirmed to be submitted, to be complete. Now, both the uh, transaction initiation and transaction completion are all done a secure MTLS based uh, transactions over a ZD based overlay in this sample application. The source code uh, of this app is available on our GitHub repo. Um, uh, we welcome application developers to take a look at it. Um, you can use it as a boilerplate template as you're exercising or investigating more capabilities with ZD. The second application that I wanted to show is the one for brownfield apps that uh, are on your Windows environment and you require secure access uh, to those applications via your Windows desktops, where you do not have access to rebuild something with the SDKs. What we have done is we have republished something called as app connectors or tunnelers that are uh, again, built on top of the ZD SDKs that we offer. And here is an example. This is done by one of my colleague, uh, Jeremy Teller. It's part of our advanced networking uh, team at NetFund. Okay, I'm gonna set this up here. We are, you'll see we're executing in a Windows sandbox that I just turned on. So everything is nice and clean. Nothing's been configured up. Uh, what I'm gonna show is we have a service secured by a ZD network. Hello.zd, so that if you come here and you don't have ZD access, you just get the regular old 404 uh, error. But if uh, you do have access, you have the identities and the tunneler running that uses our SDK, you'll be able to access that resource. So first off, I'm going to come in and I'm going to create an identity for the service. But while I'm here, I'll double check to make sure we have a service defined, um, which we do here. Hello.zd on port 80. So now I'll go to identities, demo sandbox, identity, we'll save that, quick search for it here, download that, so I have it in my downloads folder. Now I'm going to run the ZD installer and we'll do this right from scratch. Okay, let's step through the prerequisites. Okay. 
thoroughly read the EULA. And in a moment, it'll be installed. Now this is just a Windows C Sharp application that uses the CSDK. And I will add an identity that I just created. Downloads. Give it a second to register. We'll turn it on, of course, and we'll come check to make sure. Hello, Dad ZD. There's Hello, Dad ZD, port 80. Go ahead and close this down. And we will come over here. And now, voila, now I can access the resource using the Windows SDK and Windows Tunneler. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, this is a very interesting use case where we are talking about a uh, scenario where you have an existing brownfield application that wants to leverage zero trust connectivity models. We have pre-built the application connectors or the tunnelers, um, and you should be able to connect those brownfield applications into the uh, zero trust secure fabric environment powered by ZD. Um, and that was an excellent demonstration uh, based on Windows applications. Now we will park for Q&A. Uh, and, you know, I will respond to any questions that might come along the way. Thank you. Hi, this is Shri here. Uh, we are open to Q&A right now. Uh, I do see some questions posted on how do we handle end-to-end -end, uh, encryption? Uh, we do use RFC 7030 enrollment over security, secure transport, and end-to-end uh, uh, -end encryption uh, between the IoT or the application endpoints to um, uh, to connect the apps uh, themselves. Um, yes, there was a, a, a problem with the session recording. I think. Uh, um, uh, the OSS team will make sure that the recording that would be posted would have um, the original pieces around the demo and the slides would be made accessible to the audience. Um, so GitHub repo, uh, if you go to HTTPS ZT.dev, uh, you will find the URLs that I shared during the presentation. It's github.com forward slash open ZT, O-P-E-N-Z-I-T-I. -I. Uh, please um, start our repo and uh, please share your thoughts on uh, what you think about uh, uh, this particular open source project. And we would like to invite audience to start actively participating and uh, discussing with us in the open source forum. I think those were the questions. Um, thank you for attending the session. Again, uh, apologize for a few glitches. We'll make sure that the recording does have uh, the end-to-end -end slides and the demos that we have shared during um, this presentation. Thanks a lot.